This is the Horse Radio Network. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. Well, good Friday morning, everybody. I am Glenn the Geek. And I am Lisa Wysocki from Hunt Valley, Maryland. And you're listening to a special episode of Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for June the 15th, episode 1954. We are live at the American Horse Publications Annual Convention in Hunt Valley, Maryland. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday morning. We are in Hunt Valley, Maryland, and I am here with two hosts from the Horse Radio Network. Lisa Wysocki's here. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you again. We got to have dinner last night and hang out. It was fun. It was awesome. I don't know that we've ever had dinner together in all the years. We never have. (laughs) On all this time. All those years. Yeah. Amazing. It was fun. And then we also have Stephanie Ruff here from Arabian Finish Line Magazine and also Arabian Racing Radio. Hello, Horse World. (laughs) So we got a bunch of hosts here and a whole lot of people we know from the Horse World. So we're at the Delta Hotels Baltimore Hunt Valley. It's located really in Horse Country, Maryland. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, they have a um, nature conservancy thing going. So you cross the freeway and then it's it's just solid farms. I mean, huge, huge farms. And we had a big tour yesterday. And in some of the places we were at, they only allow one house for every 50 acres. Can you imagine? Wow. One house for every 50 acres. Nice. It's really, wow. it's really cool. And it's beautiful. It's rolling hills. Oh, and yeah. it's just beautiful. And they've had a lot of rain here this <laughs> spring. So everything's really green. It's really awesome. Yeah, it is beautiful. Yeah. And uh, so, and this hotel is enormous. Oh, um, <laughs> everybody's getting lost. <laughs> Finding my room, I think I got lost about five times down multiple hallways. And everything about this hotel is horse. There are oh, horses yeah. everywhere in this hotel. Everywhere. everywhere. I do everywhere. love all the decorations and the photographs and, and there are yes. saddles hanging up as, you know, wall art. It is, it's a lot of, it's a perfect place for horse people. Does yes. your bathroom have a great big picture of a, a bit? bit? Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 My, yeah. Yeah. my bit is sideways though, is. Is your bits? Are your bits? Mine's up and down. Yeah, Yeah. mine's up and down. down. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a snaffle bit? It is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we all have the same bit then. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. They had a sale on uh... (laughs) there. They did. They did. And then I've got two huge pictures of horses, hunter horses in my bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. It is cool. Everywhere you go here, there's horses in this hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's explain a little bit about what AHP is, what uh, American Horse Publications is. And Lisa, you've probably been the longest member of the three of us here. Maybe, maybe. So, you know, American Horse Publications is a group that started decades ago to uh, further the interests of all the horse magazines. And they've since um, expanded to include books and podcasts and movies. So they even let me in. (laughs) They did, you know. I mean, that says something about the organization. Right, exactly. (laughs) Took them about eight years, and then they finally said, oh, we'll let them in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so every year they have this amazing conference where you get to kind of learn all the new trends that are that are coming up. You get to meet all the editors and publishers of all the horse magazines, which is very exciting. And then they have this big awards ceremony. So that's kind of fun. So now at this conference, you learn a lot. Uh, this is really media and it can be independent journalists. Mm-hmm. It can be the publishers of the magazines. And by the way, the room we're sitting in, is the magazine room. And what that means is every magazine brings copies, like lots of copies of their magazines, and there must be a thousand magazines. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Counting it's tables. crazy. I think there's 12, like six foot tables piled high, high with horse magazines. I'm telling you, listeners, you would love being here. You would be going <laughs> yes. through, going, this, this, that. You would have enough reading for a year. Here. Yes. Yes. Print is not dead. I no. know. That's the no. thing you realize is that there's still a lot of magazines in the world. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you could not read all of these. <laughs> no, no and, and multiple issues of many of the magazines. You know, they're bringing three or four different months issues. So, you know, if you love horse magazines, this is the place to be. And then this is also an industry show, meaning that, uh, like for you, Stephanie, you're here as a publisher of a magazine. Right. And the people who print magazines are here. You know, there's the different people you have to deal with in creating the magazine are here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah it, yeah, it really does encompass all parts of publishing now. Printers, photographers, writers, publishers, um, podcasters, yeah. and, you know, digital and print. It, you know, I mean, credit to AHP for expanding and modifying as, you know, as the industry modifies. But, yeah, we're all here and it is a 
fantastic networking opportunity for all of us in in all of our different facets to meet people and talk to people. And and we're going to meet know. a lot of those people today. Yeah. We probably have about eight guests lined up today. <laughs> yeah. Now you did. Get, let's talk a little bit while we're waiting for our first guest to show up here uh, about Hunt Valley. Yeah. So its name was really based on Maryland's horse hunt country, which is right here. Right here. Um, and it it re- all revolves around the Maryland Hunt Cup, which yes. started in 1894. That's amazing. I know. And the Maryland Hunt Cup is four miles long with 22 timber fences. So they're not brushed. They're no, timber. no. And we got to walk mm-hmm. that course. Oh, yesterday. did you? Yesterday? Yeah. So what was that? Yeah. Like? You know, um, exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> Bet. Imagine riding course, it. Four miles. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the fences range in height, I think, from three foot ten, from three foot six to four foot ten. Wow. And a lot of the, the fence posts are made out of locust, which just hardens to yeah. like rock. Right. Yeah, so, it does. So when the horses, you know, hit the fence, they, they very rarely crack. And, um, you know, it's that you go around the course twice and it's like the biggest thing ever in this area. You've probably been. Yeah. Stephanie. And, and um, you know, uh, tailgating is huge and yeah it's a it's what, a, food and alcohol for horse people never <laughs> never we don't we don't do anything like that yeah um and it's yeah it's a huge deal and it's a huge social event and um yeah it's a it's a great deal of fun yeah what i found really most interesting though was we also got to go to the the actual hunt club itself and they're housed in this house that was built in 1780 can you imagine 1780 by some english guy and huge old brick house and uh, it is still being used as as the headquarters for the hunt club. I mean, normally you go to a house that's built in 1780, and it's like a museum, and right. you're like, you can't touch the walls, right. you, can't, you can't go into the, you know, no, you're just sitting on the on the the sofa, and you know, I mean, it's it's amazing. Have you got to play with the hounds? Oh, we got to play with oh, the yeah. hounds. That was so cool. Eighty hounds. Um, just we had about fifty journalists and, and authors and freelancers. And 80 hounds just milling around. It was just the most amazing experience. And, and Glenn I, and Stephanie, I have to tell you, I wanted to take one of the puppies home. <laughs> oh, they had puppies. <laughs> they had puppies. Oh, they were so cute. They're so lumbering. Oh, the, the, the hound puppies yes. are just like lumbering little balls yeah, of fur. And, and, you know, such well-cared-for hounds and so happy. Yeah. You know, just so happy. It was just awesome. Yeah. Well, that, that's very cool. You know, this uh, hunt cup actually started as a contest between two hunts the elk ridge fox hunting club and the green spring fox hunting club and it was really you know they used to bust on each other a lot i guess over some ale and so they they said well we got to have this race and that's how it started a year later the race was opened up to horses owned and ridden by members of any recognized hunt club in maryland and then in 1903 it was opened up to any hunt club in north america and now, now there's no restrictions. Apparently, uh, you don't have to. And it, it's re- restricted to amateur jockeys, I guess. I, I think so. Yeah. And and you know, but the the um, the Maryland Hunt Cup and and the Hunt, it's like the most prestigious race in yeah. the steeplechase race in the country. It we have the Iroquois steeplechase here in Nashville, not here in Nashville, but in Nashville. <laughs> I don't even know where I am. <laughs> Shows you how much sleep I've been getting. But but uh, and that's a really big race. But this is like. The race. If you're going to go see a steeplechase, you want to right. go see the Maryland Hunt Cup. It is. Uh, the, in the late 70s, women were allowed to ride for the first time, and the first female jockey to win uh, the race was Joyce Slater, and she won in 1981. And uh, to prove it was no fluke, Slater repeated in 1982. Oh, good and for her. Since then, other female riders to win the race included uh, Blythe Miller and Anne Moran. So... Uh, there's uh, a whole history here, and it is just beautiful. There's some iconic thoroughbred farms here yes, as well. Yes, we went to Saginaw, which mm-hmm. is the home of Native Dancer, and that was really an amazing, um, amazing opportunity to see their uh, their track and and um, their um, their facility. And you know, in 19, the, so the Saginaw was built by the by the Vanderbilt people. Uh, Albert Vanderbilt died uh, on the Lusitania, I think, like in 1912. But his family and his company built uh, an indoor track in 1925, a 660-yard indoor track. <laughs> uh, can you imagine? I mean, in 1925, it's indoor. Old. Indoor. Yeah. Wow. And, and it's, it's still there. They don't use it, but it's still there. <laughs> and um, they have um, um, just so many amazing horses. They're still running um, at Pimlico. They're still running at Belmont. And, and uh, it was just such a beautiful facility. 
Is that Carly I see over there? I see Carly. Come Carly, over come there. over here once. Have a seat. Our first guest is a little late, so you're going to be our first guest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I'm yeah. Excited. Yeah. All right. You're going to recognize this person. Uh, she's been on our show before. Carly Cade is here. She's right up against the mic. You have to be about an inch away. Real close. How's hey, that? Hi. Good morning, Glenn Good and Lisa. Morning. I heard you two got to hang out together. We recently. did. Yeah. We finally got to meet in person. <laughs> that was so much fun. It was fun. Yeah. yeah. I like your shirt. <laughs> on her shirt, it says, writing horse books makes my spurs jingle. <laughs> Yeah, That's that funny. means it makes me happy. Uh, That's my, I little, my little punchline. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a cowgirl. <laughs> so what have you been doing since you got here to HB? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. The American Horse Publications Conference is so much fun. Um, this is my second year being here. Yesterday, there was uh, I went on the excursion and we took a tour of Hunt Valley, Maryland. We were just talking about that. It was yeah. amazing. And uh, we actually walked the Maryland Hunt Club course that is their big steeplechase that they do every year. And I saw these fences for myself. These horses are amazing athletes. I cannot believe how tall these fences Walls. are. That's They're incredible. Tall. It was it was a really like great experience to see that. Yeah. So what's up in the world of Carly Cade? Well, of course, Carly is known for the In the Rain series and yes. uh, In the Rains was your first book and then uh, Cowboy Away, mm -hmm. right, yeah. which we've talked about here on the show. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so the books are going great. Um, I'm still in the Amazon bestselling rank, which makes me very happy. Yes. And I'm almost finished with the third book. So that should hopefully be out by the end of the year. And I've heard rumors that this is a JD book. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, actually, so the In the Rain series will finally complete with the third book. Um, I've been kind of stringing my readers along and leaving them with little fun cliffhangers um, to keep keep the excitement going. Yeah. So the third book will complete the story. Everyone will know what will happen for handsome cowboy McKenna and Kelly and wannabe cowgirl Devin Brooke. But um, I'm finding out that there's JD fans out there, too. JD is a um, I give you the choice of two cowboys in the book. One, you know, one's a bull rider. The other is a horse trainer. Um, so there's JD fans. So I've already started working on a fourth companion piece to the In the Rain series featuring JD. as. It's the like lead. the movie Solo. Yeah. It's kind of a spinoff. Right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Mm -hmm. That is great. Now, Carly, I've told you this before and you never listen. <laughs> so now Lisa has written Horses in the Morning into her books. And we have not seen Horses in the Morning in your book yet. I, I you know, it's like, it's going to happen. Believe me, it's going to happen. <laughs> this is going to be a long career of writing. Maybe Lisa and I can, can collaborate. Can you please make there Jamie the murderer? We've there been trying to get her to murder somebody all these years, and it's never happened. Yeah. All right, we're, we're going to collaborate, Glenn. We'll, we'll talk about our, our we'll plot the storyline, and yeah. we'll make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> So where can people buy them? Where can they find them? So you can visit my website, www.carlycadecreative.com. And there's a link to, you can buy them directly from me or Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, Nook, iBooks, and Google Books. So it's pretty much everywhere you would shop for a book. Yeah. yeah. So we always ask authors, what's the toughest part for you? Everybody's our answer is different with an author, too, of the writing process. What's the hardest part? I think the hardest part is um, dealing with your mind talking to yourself like, you know, this, you know, I'm not good enough to do this. Why am I doing this? I don't have anything to say. So I found that. Alcohol it's, helps. <laughs> yeah. Well, they always say, I think, who was it? Um, who said, uh, write drunk, drunk authors, edit, by the way. sober. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was like a famous quote from yeah. Emerson or someone like that. J.D. Salinger or somebody. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yes, no, that helped. Well, I'd write in the morning, so drinking in the morning, I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> oh. um, but, it, but really what I found is just sitting down and doing the work. One of the best books I ever read, and my favorite quote is from Stephen King. He wrote the book yeah. on writing, which I highly it's recommend. It's an amazing book, yeah. It's awesome. Um, the hardest part is, or the hardest moment is just before you start. So I find once I finally sit down, schedule that Isn't time. Isn't that true of anything we do, though? Absolutely. Yeah. Just once start. you get going, you're fine. Yeah. It's, right? you know, to start anything or a dream, you just have to sit down, do the work and believe it and, and just follow yes. follow that passion. Yeah. Yes. And that is so true of everything we do. So true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. Well, everybody starts a podcast. I tell them you just got to record the first one and yeah. it's going to suck and then you're going to do it again. <laughs> yeah. You know? And you grow. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like writing. You know, right, Stephanie? Our yes, first one's always absolutely suck. Absolutely. No, my first, first one, my first one did not no, suck. I'm sure it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> you should have seen our first one. They really suck. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the first episode no, of Stable Scoop. It was like, oh my God. You do have to just... Just do it. Do it. Yeah. Nike's Nike's um, yeah. tagline. Well, and how hard is it for the editor of a magazine 
I mean, you got to coordinate and put everything together. It's and yeah. and it's got that's got to suck sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. And no matter how hard the thing is, is no with that. No matter how hard you try to work ahead and plan ahead, it all still slams at the same time. And and that's because your writers <laughs> are doing it the same way all at the last minute. You know, and, and and so you try really really hard to to time manage everything, but at all you still end up doing fifteen hour days the week before it has to. Go go to print. And that's just how it happens. Um, so, you, but you just get it done. You yeah. sit down and yeah. you get it done. All right, Carly, give the website again. Uh, www.carlycade, K-A-D-E, creative.com. All right, Carly. Thanks for stopping we'll see by. You the, we'll Yay. see you all weekend. We'll Thanks have so the HP conference. Yes, right. too. Thanks, we'll Carly. see you soon.